What is up YouTube and welcome back to Bike Hub Japan. So today I want to take you on a journey through time, back to the year 2001. <laughs> 2001 was a really crap year. For those of you who weren't around, all of this crazy stuff happened. I believe that a plane has crashed into the World Trade Center. Have been punctuated by the signs of slaughter and death. On my orders, the United States military has begun strikes against Al-Qaeda terrorist training camps and military installations of the Taliban regime in Afghanistan. Dude, what was that? Are you daft? That's the Jigsaw 1000 promo vid. Ah, oh, dude, play some more. All right then. When I passed my big bike test license, the first bike I bought was a VFR 400 NC30 in Smoking Joe's colors. And while I loved that bike to bits, I looked upon the GSX-R range with envious eyes. At first, I wanted a GSX-R 750S rad, but the timing wasn't right. And then in 2001, the K1 came out, and then I decided that one day I will get one. Fast forward 20 years, back to good old 2021, and the opportunity arose for me to get myself a 2001 GSX-R 1000. Here she is. so let's talk about my actual bike so I made a mistake I said it's a k1 but it isn't it's a k2 because the k1 didn't come in this black and red color scheme the first generation only came in like the bluish like Suzuki racing colors so my bike has k5 front forks and the Brembo m4.32 calipers um, if we come around to the back as well the rear shock I'm not sure what model it's from, but it's got a tuning shop sticker on it, so hopefully that's being rebuilt. Um, there's not much else I can tell you about the bike. Um, the kilometers are really low. Uh, wrong button. So it is done in total 1,471 kilometers, so it's quite a low mileage bike. Um, if we come around to the exhaust, you can see it has a Yoshimura R11, which is a full titanium system. So it's rather nice. And uh, yeah, so I've had it for about a month now. Um, still not quite used to it, but yeah, I'm getting, I'm getting used to it and I'm enjoying it. So I think it's about time we stop talking and go for a ride on the twisties. So what's it like on the twisties? Well, as I've mentioned many times before, the twisties in Japan are a bit like this. They're a bit slow and narrow, so it's not uh, going to be a great comparison for you guys out in California hitting amazing canyon roads every weekend. So just bear that in mind. Um, now, that being said, it's a good illustration of how, how well the bike goes, even in slow speed situations. Because you would think, you know, like 1000cc four cylinder bike, it's going to be screaming its, screaming its head off and it's not going to be any good on slowish roads but actually it's it's quite good now i can't say for every k1 k2 because my forks and shock are different but um yeah this this bike absolutely handles perfectly for a bike that's 20 years old you would never imagine it you would never guess the age of it 
Um, the tyres that I'm on are Dunlop uh, Sport Max, I think they're called. Um, so they're not super duper track day tyres, but they are, they are good on, on the roads like this. And you know, it's fall now, it is autumn, so the uh, temperature of the, the road is quite low at the moment. But yeah, I'm, uh, I'm enjoying it. Now, the power itself is, um, I'm not going to say overwhelming, but it is quite surprising. It's, it's quite, quite talky, so you don't actually have to, you know, go through the, go through the gearbox up and down a lot on, on slowish roads like this, which is nice. Um, it's got plenty of torque and it's quite a tractable engine. So, yeah, for a road, for the riding like this today, you can just stick it in second and third the whole time and hardly ever have to change down. So it's got lots of usable torque, which I really like. Um, braking as well. So as I said, it's got the K5 forks and K5 wheels. So it's also got the, the Brembo M4.32 calipers on it. So my pads are actually a little bit worn. So I'm not going to say the performance is amazing, but I think that's basically just down to the pads. So once I, uh, I've got a bit of money and I can refresh the bike up a bit, new chain, new sprockets and uh, new brakes is first on the list. So what I'll do in a minute is I'll find somewhere to uh, pull over and give the exhaust a bit of a sound check so you guys can hear what it sounds like. Then I'll uh, stick the microphone in the seat of the bike and do another couple of kilometres on these, this twisty road and uh, Hopefully you'll hear a nice onboard sound from the old girl. What is it like around town? Well for me I'm absolutely having no issues whatsoever. Um, on other bikes I've ridden I tend to get a bit of uh, pain in the wrists but this bike has quite a nice comfortable riding position so around town for me it's absolutely ideal. Now comfort wise it's fine but the other thing that's uh, in this bike's favour is the engine has so much torque and so much tractability that you can just cruise around town in third gear and you can still get those overtakes done, you can still get the lane splitting done without having to shift through the gears like go down the box. So the engine itself really lends itself to uh, city riding. Um, now the bike itself is quite a light bike, I think it's 170 kilos dry, so yeah, put the fuel on top, it's probably what, like 190 kilos maybe? And it just feels light and manoeuvrable and flickable. So there's never a point when, I think I'm pretty much got a full fuel tank now, so I'm at the, the maximum weight that it's gonna be. And it's just, it's just light and absolutely cool. So yeah, for me, for city driving, city riding even, uh, big thumbs up. So, what's it like on the highway? Needless to say, being in line for 1000, it's pretty damn good. 
uh, aside from the fact that it's really fast in the straight line and stable, um, I'm in top gear now, I'm in sixth gear, doing just under 5,000 RPM and it's doing about, I guess, 70 miles an hour, it's doing like 120 kilometers an hour. So it's yeah, fairly economical and right now, like I said, I'm in sixth, if I just open the throttle, instant performance, even in sixth gear. So yeah, very good on the highway. Again, another big thumbs up from me. Alright guys, so I've had this bike for exactly a month today now, so I'm just going to end the video now with my final thoughts on the bike. Um, now, until a few days ago, I would have said that this bike is a pussycat despite the fact that it's a thousand cc sports bike it's very easy to ride the power delivery is nice and linear um, you don't really have a scary power band where all of a sudden the front end lifts up when you're mid-corner i would have said that and what i think has happened is i have just not treated the bike with uh, as much respect as it deserves because when you think about it you look at it on paper 170 kilos uh, dry weight 160 horsepower you know that isn't something to be sniffed at now while it's not a modern superbike with 200 plus horsepower the obvious danger is still there so if you get a bit too cocky and you start getting a bit a bit um, above your skill level with this thing it is going to bite so a couple of days ago me and my mate went out for a ride and i lost the back end on this twice now once was kind of scary and i thought i was going to high side the thing and once was just a little bit of a a little bit of a slide coming out of second gear corners and so that made me kind of sit up and pay attention to the fact that this is you know when this was brand new this was the creme de la creme of super bikes and so while the for me the engine is so smooth and linear that it kind of you it kind of makes you forget that you're sitting on a missile um, because you know 160 horsepower that's enough to get you up to 180 miles an hour it'll accelerate like hell it lifts it lifts the front wheel in first and second off the power it will easily clutch do clutch up wheelies in third so when you got that kind of power you just have to sort of give it the respect that it deserves which i haven't been doing and so now i'm being a bit more uh sensible when i'm riding it um except for doing wheelies obviously but uh, yeah, so I think one, that's the main thing that I've learned is it might seem like it's a nice, uh, a nice, easy to ride, confidence inspiring, love that word, confidence inspiring bike. But at the end of the day, it is a super bike. So as long as you're happy with having no ABS, no traction control, no anti wheelie control, basically nothing. You've got a throttle and some levers and that's it. So the only thing that's going to stop you from sliding off the bike is your own brain, not a six axis IMU. So as long as you're happy with that, um, then yeah, from, I would highly suggest getting one of these, 2001, 2002, basically any, all of the generation Jix of thousands are good bikes. And um, being 20 years old, um, so far I've had no issues with it. Um, the first day that I took it out for a ride, the engine stopped and we spent hours and hours taking the tank off, taking the throttle bodies off, uh, adjusting a bunch of stuff. And when we gave up three hours later and it still wouldn't start, uh, my mate noticed that there was a, uh, a wire hanging down next to my shock, which turned out to be the tip over switch. So the ECU thought the bike was crashed and it wouldn't uh, give us any ignition. So all we basically had to do was put that sensor back onto its bracket and then it was fine and since then you know it's been a month today since then i've had absolutely no dramas whatsoever so uh yeah if people out there are worried like oh old bike old bike i don't know it's not it's not for me then i would say don't worry japanese quality baby so yeah that's basically um that's basically all i've got to say about this bike so far i'm absolutely loving it and i think anyone else out there who uh is looking for a cost effective um bike that has got the basically the almost the same performance as modern bikes then then this is the bike for you um, now the reason I chose a Jixa is purely because of the engine um, other 
sort of 2000-ish year bikes that I've ridden, like my mate's R1, the power just kicks in way too hard and it's sort of a bit scary on the road, but this is so tractable and the power delivery is so linear that I would have no problems riding this all year round. Uh, whether it's raining, whether there's a bit of snow on the road or whatever, I think this, this bike is just a good all-rounder. So yeah, that's my final thoughts. Going off to do a bit of shopping in town now. And uh, if you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to hit that like button. And if you haven't done it already, please do subscribe. All right guys, I'll see you in the next video. Ciao.